Shut up and sit down. Hey, it's Death Man from Death Man Vinyl here to continue our conversation on record values. I uh, want to answer that million dollar question, what are my records worth? I want to talk about pressings. Um, there's value in that. A lot of people kind of uh, want to have that first pressing. Uh, some, some vinyl guys really kind of geek out on, on uh, you know, unique pressings. It, but, but how do you figure that out? How do you decide when was my record pressed? Um, they all have the same date on the back. They all say copyright 1973 or whatever it is. Doesn't change when it's re-released in, in 2008. It still says copyright 1973. So there's a real technical way uh, to figure out what pressing you have. There's also a fun way. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about the detective work. How to kind of uh, as you go through that record, almost kind of a you know, putting some clues together to tell you what, what pressing you have. And then at the very end, I'll tell you the technical way to do it, which again, it's the technical way. So it's not, not nearly as much fun. So you start with um, the catalog number. Every record has got a, a catalog number on the Steely Dan. has got a catalog number there. Uh, sometimes they put it on the front. Um, sometimes they don't with the record company, but it's also on the spine. And then you've also got it on the label. So it should match up. So that's a good place to start. Uh, so you know what you've got. Next thing to do is, um, I always say trust your nose, your fingers, and your eyes. I mean, an old record looks old, feels old, and quite honestly, it usually smells old. It's been down in the, the uh, basement or in the closet for a while. Um, here's an old Paul Butterf Butterfield Blues Band record. Um, the, uh, the jackets were almost cardboardy compared to, to the paperboard. Um, and forgive me, I'm gonna abuse this record. I mean, this is thick vinyl, man. You could, you could kill a cat with this. This vinyl. Um, and compare that to something, okay, don't judge me, Roy Parker Jr.'s greatest hits, but this was a, a, an 80s album. I mean, you see how, flimsy that is. And so uh, an older record is just gonna feel more substantial. The, the vinyl's gonna be heavy, um, the, the jacket's gonna be thick, kind of cardboardy, and quite honestly, the, eh, this isn't, this actually looks pretty good, but the artwork will usually be kind of worn out. It'll kind of be, it'll look flat. It'll be kind of pastel colors. So the, I kind of start there. Trust your eyes, your, your fingers, and, and, and your nose, and that'll give you some clues. And so when you read uh, about a description of an album and you're trying to determine, you know, what version, what pressing it is, a lot of times they'll say it's got the blah, blah, blah label on it, you know, the, the purple label or the label with the rainbow on it. So the label the, on the record actually changes. So CCR, one of my favorite bands of all times. I mean, this is kind of that classic uh, fantasy records label. Uh, this was on it when I bought this back in the, I guess the, the 70s when I bought this record. Um, but then I've got another copy, Pendulum, which was a later album by them. And it's, I got real excited when I saw this. It's got a different label. It's got the original blue fantasy label on it. So looking at the label is a good way to, to kind of start narrowing down which, which version you've got. And then we look, does the album cover have, have some detail to it? You know, this is that classic Rolling Stones, uh, Sticky Fingers. This is an early pressing. It's got the uh, the zipper on it. Uh, one of my favorite Stones records, uh, Some Girls, and that's got that uh, insert. This has got some detail. This is this is die cut. Um, and record companies are lazy and they're cheap. And so they go to reissue those these things and they take all that detail out. Uh, if you get a, a later pressing of, of Some Girls, it's just flat. They, they basically take a picture of the album and, and reproduce it with no detail. Same thing here. And then I start looking inside. What kind of what kind of stuff is in there? Uh, classic album, man, this sold a gazillion copies. There's a ton of reissues, but uh, you know, this has got, you know, the original lyric sheet in it. So I'm like, okay, well that's, that was earlier on. And then my absolute favorite is when you get in here and, and find some, some band swag, like here's a, here's a insert to subscribe to the Beggar's Banquet magazine, which I would love to be able to do. Um, 
Skinner uh, Street Survivors. You know, this is that there's that classic um, ver uh, you know example of a, of a repressing. This is the original prior to them going down, unfortunately, in a, in a plane crash. It's got the flames and the subsequent versions. Uh, in the name of good taste. Uh, were blacked out and didn't didn't have the flames. But in here is all kinds of cool stuff. Um, I would kill to be able to send this in for five ninety eight and get my wife a free bird necklace and get myself that that classic Skinner uh, t shirt. But so those things are all kind of telling me, okay, I'm, I've got an early version uh, of this record. And then the ultimate swag album of all times is the Who Live at Leeds, which I think is also happens to be the greatest live album uh, ever recorded. Um, got all kinds of stuff in there. My favorite is it's got a copy of uh, their contract to appear at Woodstock for $6,250. That was a breakthrough performance for them, introduced them to a, to a much wider American audience. But anyway, I know uh, subsequent issues, uh, reissues of Who Live at Leeds, it's, it's not a fold out, doesn't have any of this stuff in it, it's flat. Uh, looks totally different. So I have this one, I know that's, that's an earlier pressing. All right, so here's where we're gonna get geeky and technical and precise. And this is how you, without a doubt, uh, can tell what pressing you have. And so again, my favorite uh, CCR album, and take that out. And so what we're looking at here is right in, in there. We call that the run out or the dead wax. That's the, where the needle runs out of music. Right in there, there's all kinds of, of, of a, a wealth of information. And so basically the mastering engineer, the guy that made the plate that pressed this record is gonna put some, some information in there, some code. Uh, and from that code, I can find out uh, when this was pressed, uh, even what plant, what record plant it was pressed at, uh, who the recording uh, or the mastering engineer was. And it's interesting, uh, this stuff is handwritten in there. Uh, sometimes these mastering engineers have, have fun with it. You know, they'll put, uh, they'll put their signature, they'll have a little pictogram, uh, you know, a triangle or something like that that's unique to them. But where you can really go and find a wealth of information uh, and use that code from the, the run out or the dead wax is on, on Discogs. Uh, you, you, they will bury you in information once, once you have that data. And so that's how you, without a doubt, understand uh, what, what pressing you have. And I'd encourage you, if you're listing uh, records for sale on Discogs, on, uh, on eBay, don't BS. Make sure you know what you've got, because there's nothing you can do that's gonna cheese off a, a record buyer more than telling them, oh, this is the first pressing, and they get it and they do their research and find out it obviously isn't. But again, uh, do your homework before you list something and tell somebody, hey, this is a, a first pressing or original pressing. Um, that's, that's bad juju to, uh, to not, not get that right. Well, I've really enjoyed talking with you about uh, record values and invite you to, to uh, stay tuned for our continuing series on how to buy, sell, and most important, take care of and enjoy uh, your vinyl record collection. If you've got a question about record value, man, I'd be happy to share uh, my opinion, uh, my thoughts on what your records might be worth. Just drop us a comment, or you can also catch us here or here. And until then, the deaf man saying, keep them spinning. <laughs>